Hi, thanks for talking to me. I appreciate it. I, I watched the, the whole season two in the last few days. I actually had not seen this show before, but I really like it. And I want to go back and watch all the original now. So I really, really oh, enjoyed it. Do it. Do it. So Yeah, it was fun. So can you start by just sort of teasing for fans of the show? What, what can they expect this season for the characters? Whoever. Yeah, wants. we go out in season one with a major cliffhanger um, that we, we hope it was uh, frustrating in the best sense for our audience, because we love uh, when you're really invested in a show and they leave you hanging. You're like, oh, my gosh, like what's going to happen now? And, and, it's, and it's kind of fun like, in, in a world in, where things are so accessible virtually and digitally at the at our fingertips. I think dramatically it's kind of fun when someone's invested in a story to make them wait for something. Uh, but we wanted to honor and pay off that that faith by immediately tackling and going after that dramatic question. So that cliffhanger gets answered in the first two episodes uh, in, I think, a, a really satisfying way. And that the fans can expect to be dropped right back into it and to see how it all unfolds. Do you have anything else you want to add, Henrik? Well, I, I think... Pretty much okay. cover it. <laughs> Those first two hours is the conclusion of, you know, a year right. wait. And, and I, I do think that once you get through that without spoiling how, how it actually ends, you'll be satisfied that that was OK for us to leave you guys hanging. And then we go on, you know, the journey of the season we, and, you know, not to spoil anything, but in old stories from the past comes back and haunts um, Harry and, and Money Chandler. You know, they they poke the bear that is the federal government um, and that's going to have some real repercussions for them and how, you know, pushes them together to work and to a certain extent for, for Money Chandler to see what she has been criticizing Harry Bosch for in the past, like, you know, being in the gray zone and maybe bending certain things. She did as well. And, you know, she has to trust Harry to to do some moves and they have to work together. So that's a very, very fascinating story. And, you know, we have other the, the storylines that are specifically unique for for this season that doesn't go back. So it, it, without spoiling, I think you will feel satisfied that we concluded what happened previously. And then we start up some new, really exciting storylines and we have some great actors. Michael C. Hall comes in and just acts, you know, run circle around us and pleasure to have on set. We have Max Martini, who's, you know, another very, very great character this season, who's an, you know, antagonist in another storyline, so to speak. So it's, um, it's eight episodes after that first movie that hopefully will leave you, in the same place as you were after season one, it's like, okay, when does season three drop? That's that's our intentions. <laughs> right. And that was was going to be sort of my next question. Can you sort of, and you obviously mentioned a few, but there's a lot of new characters that have come in this season um, that we haven't had before that kind of play an important role, especially a couple of them. <laughs> is there anybody else that you're allowed? I don't know what's allowed to be revealed, so I don't want to don't want to say anything, but is there any other ones that you're allowed to talk about sort of how their characters play a part? Or is that all? Uh, keeping an eye on no. <laughs> no, I said Tom. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, don't say anything. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll I'll step into it for you, Jamie. Um, uh, Jessica Camacho is is terrific as Jade Quinn, and uh, that's an important character to track. That character had to have certain qualities in terms of being both intriguing and intelligent, and to pull us in in the same way that Mo is kind of pulled into her ambit and um we're we're excited about uh, uh our, our audience going with mo and being able to see more of him because he's a new cre creature of, of of legacy and a really interesting character and stephen chang is terrific but seeing where that relationship goes with jade quinn um I, it was one of the more sort of gratifying stories to build and see how it all landed in the end uh, the other thing I wanted to ask is obviously even now this is still based on the book series. I, I haven't read them, but how do you kind of decide not only what to pull, but it, it sounds like some of them are pulled from different books, even for the same season. So how do you kind of decide that against what you add of your own? Like, how do you make that balance? It's a really good question. I think it's just something we feel out as storytellers, especially those of us who have been involved in this story world for almost a decade now. And you know which books you've done 
And the one thing that we try to honor is like, what are the consequences for these characters in their dramatic actions? So sometimes there'll be things to your point that happened several seasons ago that then kind of present themselves in a different way in this new world. Um, you know, the, the books are, are, are primarily with Bosch as he's a homicide detective. Mm -hmm. So we've had to invent a lot of what his life is like now in contemporary Los Angeles as a private eye, especially teamed up with a character who only appears in one book. Um, never mind putting on its feet this whole other world with with Maddie Bosch as a as a patrol cop, because that's new to that's some an invention as well. So it's sometimes OK, what books feel right that we haven't done that lend themselves to the given sort of cir story circumstances with the new, this new iteration? What has organically come from our story world that we can pursue that's interesting? And then just sort of feeling our way through it and, and landing on things that feel interesting to us and satisfying to us and we hope satisfying to the audience. Yeah. And also adding to that, I, I think with having done all of that and then taking a look around in the real world, what has happened in between season and what is happening, I think, you know, without too much detail, Money Chandler makes a big announcement and is going to pursue yeah. a political career in, in, in this upcoming season. And of course, we look around in the Los Angeles we live in and, you know, the world in general, what's going on. And then that becomes not always, but often becomes a part of the storytelling. If you're going to tell someone running for district attorney in LA, okay, you actually have to look around and see what's going on into the city. So the people who lives in LA, and I think this is true for any major city in, in, in the US, but also around the world, like what are the problems we have? It's homelessness, it's, it's poverty, it is uh, policing in general, like all these bigger questions that goes into this conversation and hopefully outcome a story that both feels riveting interesting but also timely and um something that you can relate to yeah and i think you can catch on too even if you haven't seen all the other story because i mean I, like i said i watched all the season two but i obviously got it so um the other thing i want to ask and, and i don't i know you probably can't tell me specifics because otherwise it would be more of a, of a director type question but you have you know scenes like chasing criminals around the city that are kind of very you know, expansive. And then you have some very claustrophobic things. I was just curious, like, is one a lot harder to create than the other just overall? Oh, wow. That's a good one. I, I, I think yeah. as complicated as shooting a car chase is, you know, from a production standpoint, but putting Madison Linz as an actress in, in a box for an extended time that's the real challenge, I think, for everyone, because you literally you're working with a fantastic actress that's going to be in a pine box and it's hot. And, you know, we have real insects that we're dropping into this box and there's dust. And, and I think for a director who's there on set and for her as an actress, you don't have a lot to do. Like she's literally in a box, like all that she conveys is with her breathing, her eyes and, you know, to be because she's a woman of urgency. She's not laying there. She's not going to die. She takes power and agency mm -hmm. of the situation. And how do you convey that? It's easy. It's like, hey, let's run a car over a cliff. That will look cool. And it's really <laughs> complicated for us as producers to put that together. But the challenges of putting Madison in that box and executing what Tom and the other writers had put on page that's the real challenge in my book. Great. And well, the really gratifying thing about that, Jamie, is with with respect to the box is all of our different departments rise to the occasion. So we have a great director in Sharat Raju who who works with our DP and um, storyboards exactly mm -hmm. how we're going to cover, what angles, what kind of close-ups, what do we want it to feel like? And you collaborate with your production design and your art department, and you talk with your costume people and your makeup so that there's a progression of her look as the story unfolds. And there are all these meetings and time that goes into it. So, so to watch each of these departments, each of these really creative people deliver at such a high level for our story is is a tremendous honor and then to watch something like what madison does with it uh we couldn't have asked for anything more because she's terrific but it's all of these things kind of coming together uh, to execute that and to make it feel real and we hope satisfying to the audience 
Yeah, yeah, definitely felt real. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you both for your time. I appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to more. I hope you get a season three. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thanks. Very have much, a, Jamie. Thank have you. Have a good day, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.